Hey, Trevor Matthews from Refrigeration Mentor here again at Chill Venta 2022. Super excited to have this conversation with the one and only Stephen Gill. How you doing, Stephen? The one and only Chris Matthew. <laughs> Trevor Matthews. Chris, I've already got the name wrong. It's been, it's been a long three days. Yeah, me. He's seen many Chris's along his way. It's been a so, long three days. Me and Steve go back many years, really when he started, first started World Refrigeration Day, which we're going to get into, which I'm really happy to try to be a part of every year because I think it's something so important for our industry. And I'd love to hear from you, why did you start World Refrigeration Day? Somebody had to. It had to come along eventually. That. Yes, yes. Goodness me, if we don't deserve our own day, there's yeah. something wrong. There are days for, for everything. Some of them quite frivolous. I don't know, world, I better not say one because they might not think it's frivolous. <laughs> world flower arranging day, world pizza day, world canoeing day. Yeah. And they are obviously not to be taken too seriously, but they, they do draw attention. But there's yeah. some very serious days, you know, yeah. world refugee day, world river day, uh, world yeah. water day. Uh, so I felt that, I hope that we're at the, the more serious end. I mean, there's yeah. some light hard lessons. But why do, why do we need a day? Because we're a hidden industry. I think as long as I've been in the industry, I've heard people say we need, we need more visibility. Because and without the visibility, we, we get excluded from uh, all the policy making decisions. You know, we're, we're not included in that, all the training, all the inviting the people in. Yeah. Everything that's important to us, being hidden is not helpful. Yeah. So we need our own day. So it's for visibility. Yeah, and, and I, I really appreciate you doing that, and you're right. You, someone needed to do and I'm so glad that you started because there's more people like Refrigeration Mentor and myself around the world who want to make the industry more visible. We want to, the industry to grow because we believe that it's something that the world needs and it is something that the world needs, refrigeration. And when we talk about refrigeration, we don't only talk about you know, air conditioning or, or supermarkets, we talk about saving people's lives you know, and, and many different things that people don't even think of everyday uses the cell phone that I got in my pocket if we didn't have refrigeration it wouldn't be working as it did we wouldn't have the, the world we have today without refrigeration Absolutely. I mean, we, we, you know, <laughs> as an industry we talk about how it touches everybody's lives in different ways you know to almost every minute of every day in in developed world it touches yeah. our lives but you mentioned about it's, it's also important to survival and access for cooling yeah. is incredibly important uh, there were parts of the world where you just you would die, obviously, yeah. and that is getting more so. So having not only access to cooling, but sustainable cooling, we need to bring down the emissions. We need to bring yeah. down the, the environmental impact. As the demand grows, we have to do it responsibly. Yeah. We, we can't just say no; they can't have it. We have to. You know, yeah, it's, it is a matter of survival in places. And I totally agree. And this is what I loved about Chilvanta so far. So many innovating manufacturers who are thinking about the environment, being more uh, conscious about the equipment that they're building because as energy prices rises and different things happen around the world, we need to come up and, and find new leaders with inside the refrigeration industry to come up with these ideas and new technologies to really help the world uh, around us expand and grow and think about the things like that. Because when you think about having a fridge or installing a freezer, you don't think the impact on um, just yours but when you have a hundred million of those being installed or a billion of those pieces of equipment installed around the world, then there's a big impact. Exactly. I mean, you're right. The impact is, it's, you know, we, we know about refrigerants. We talk about all these things all the time. And one of the, and just, uh, decarbonizing and heating, the heat pump, you know, is, is, yeah. is a refrigeration system. And, and we all know the merits of uh, the electrical input into the, the benefits of the heat that comes out, you know, three or four to one. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, what we, we don't think is that a refrigeration or air conditioning system is a, a heat pump in reverse. Yeah. We're throwing away all that heat into the... Who would put a four kilowatt heater on the roof or whatever? Yeah. Throwing heat out. Yeah. We have to really think about ways to rethink holistically about the, the heat movement and the, and the thermal energy that we're moving yeah. and storing. And I love that. And, and if you're out there listening to this, these are the things you should be thinking about. How do I use the most amount of energy inside that system for productive use? Because as you say, 
we, I see it every day where you're just throwing away heat, throwing, throwing away heat. energy, because the design of the system is an old school design or an old design. So we really need to be thinking about this. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to in uh, refrigeration as well as in the World Refrigeration Day? Some of the things that you have seen over the last coming years, maybe it is heat pump, maybe it's CO2 natural refrigeration, but what are some of the things that you see, because you're a global travel and you talk about refrigeration everywhere around the world, um, what are some of the things that you're really excited about for refrigeration? I think, I, I, I mean, we, I, I'm an engineer, yeah. so I love watching around and seeing the, the new technology. But, but I think what excites me more now is the holistic thing. We're, we're incorporating ourselves into buildings, into, in, into even the built environment yeah. and local planning. Yeah. So being part of that, rather than being, oh yeah, we, we add you at the end of the conversation, the building needs, we're getting involved earlier in the conversations. So district planning, where they, 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 you know, they're pulling trees up, they're thinking about shading yeah. to lower, but we're part of that conversation early on. Yeah. Um, retail stores where they're not having gas anymore, where they're using the heat and the cooling combined. Yeah. We're getting much earlier involved in those conversations. That's exciting. We're not out on a limb anymore. Yeah, and that's what I really love. And I've seen this on many more conventions that I go to and exped uh, expeditions, expedition, <laughs> expos. Um, it's that, been a long three days. Yeah, <laughs> no. But just really seeing different minds coming together and then seeing us being included in those conversations, like building district heating systems and networks for whole cities being planned and, and we're in that conversation now and I, I really like that. Yeah. Now we, we, I'm being part of the, as, we, as more visibility is, is, we are getting to the policy makers, they, are, they now do know that we exist as a sector. I mean we are the only in this, well perhaps not the only, we're so important as we, as we know to mankind and to survival and to wealth and everything else, comfort. There's no government anywhere in the world that I'm aware of that has a minister or responsible for cooling or yeah. heating. Infrastructure, energy, you name it. We are almost a forgotten child of the yeah. whole world. And nobody, and because of that, there's this, always this disconnect. Yeah. And, but we are getting there. And one day I hope, if there's a hope I submit, that there'll be a minister or something at government level responsible for cooling. And so now do you hear this? Every continent, every country, every city, you need Stephen Gill to be that government of refrigeration. We need a leader, and Stephen is the guy to get this started because we need to work together. This is a global issue. If we do not work together, we're going to continue to work in silos, and working together is going to have better and better for mankind. Uh, but we need young leaders. That's what we need people like yourself, and, the, and, and dare I say, younger ones. We need the, need the younger ones coming through. And not just for the, to keep the trade going, to keep the industry going. We need the leadership coming through. Yeah. We, must, we, we talk a lot about bringing people into our industry. We really need to develop and nurture, which I know is very close to your heart, the ones that we have. Yeah. And so that they can be the, they can be the, the, the future leaders, because yeah. that's what we need. I'm too old to be a leader now. <laughs> I'm passing on to the next generation. <laughs> I love it. Stephen, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. I really appreciate Please it. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you.